Our season seven, namely the season of love, has finally wrapped and we're getting ready for a brand new season right here in my beloved Saigon. Last year, season six, junior edition, we listened to a lot of inspiring stories from our young guns, and we have been so amazed by how talented they are and how well they prepare for the future. The future, such a wonderful word. And I think the word itself carries all the faith, the trust, the belief in a beautiful tomorrow. I had the most beautiful time of my life in university, and I hope and I'm sure that everyone does as well. But dear high schoolers and beloved freshmen, how well prepared are you for university? Does the major you choose match the career you love? Hmm, how about the necessary skills for your studies? What is interesting about mm, college activities? And it's you, you, the person who can turn your university life to the best time of your life. Yes, you can, absolutely can. VTV7 and British University Vietnam proudly brings to you IFO Nightly Show Season 8. Student Edition! Viva Student Life! University of Vietnam. Hey guys! We just tried to squeeze in a photo shoot and welcome to IFO Season 8. Yes, we've officially made it to Season 8. That's incredible! And I'm so honored and happy to be back on the show as the main host. And the tagline of this season is Viva Student Life! That's very nice. Okay, so the tagline of this IFO season 8 is Viva Student Life. Long life, the student life. So that we, you know, could help you guys to make the college time the best out of your time. And also, we're going to be equipping you with a lot of student skills and how you can become a successful student and also a bright citizen. Welcome to the new set, the new studio of IFO Season 8. And we have the usual red chairs for the guests, but in this episode, the very first one, these red chairs will not be seated because we will be meeting new guests in Sega. And I'm not the only host who hosts the show. We also have our beautiful, talented girl, my little sister, that I think a lot of you guys have guessed. That is Tao Tham. Now back to Tao Tham in Saigon. Hi guys, my name is Phu Nam and I'm a stand-up comedian. Beside that, I'm a human being. And this is... Hello, my name is Uile and I'm also a stand-up comedian. I'm also a creative director, I also sing, I also dance, I also draw and do a lot of other things. And this is... Tumbete, he's gonna be either here or here, depending on the post-production team. And we are Saigon Teo. And we're so excited to be here with you guys. We hope to share our craziness with everyone. Enjoy. Yeah. 
Saigon Beo, fantastic. Wow. You don't know how excited I am right now because I'm a big fan of yours. We are a big fan of yours. Um, we watch your videos and your videos has just lightened up our day. We love your sense of humor and I look forward to this conversation. And I do believe that my sister Thao Tham will handle it so well. So back to Emil Thao Tham. Thank you, Yimi. I am super excited here today because this is the first episode of IFO Nightly Show. And uh, I am here with two not only very interesting but very vibrant personalities. And I am the host of today's episode, but I'm sure the focus is going to be on you guys. Saigon Tho, the first and a very unique stand-up comedy collective right here in Saigon. So can you tell me a little bit about Saigon Tho? Okay, I do have a little bit of pressure when you say <laughs> comedian, be funny, so <laughs> be vibrant. So my name is Ui Le. I am a stand-up comedian, uh, first in English and recently in Vietnamese. So oh. Saigon Tao is very young, like very new. We, we've only been in business, and I say that like we have money, but <laughs> <laughs> in business for uh, like almost two years, almost two years. Almost two oh. years. So we're very young and I'm, I'm super excited to be here. Thank you so much. Like we, this is, we've known each other for a while, but yeah. this is actually the first time we meet each other in person. It's, it's <laughs> so, so odd filming this is after so, COVID. Yeah, like, yeah, I feel like this is not a Zoom <laughs> screen anymore. This is my first time meeting An Phung Nam. We do follow so each other on social media. Yes. But this is the first time I've seen him in person and I'm going to let Phu Nam introduce himself. Yes, yeah, not like my friends. I got a lot of pressure right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm a stand-up comedian and I am a talent of Saigon Toe. Uh, and uh, I got a medium talented. So, <laughs> thank you to be here and I hope that I could bring some joys for everybody. Uh. Let's go. So Saigon Teo has been in uh, uh, the works for two years, mm -hmm. but I'm sure like the pre-planning phase of Saigon Teo probably like exceeded that. And uh, I know An Ui was a stand-up comedy, a comedian, like for quite a time yeah. before, right? So so I've been a comedian for around five years, but oh. I performing English first. Mm. So basically, you know, I went around like bars and like expat groups and mm. because they have that culture there. Mm -hmm. So I perform in a couple of places in uh, like uh, Asia, like Singapore, in Thailand, in uh, like Shanghai and stuff like that. I've won a couple of competitions, mm. not bragging, humble bragging mm. like my mom. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I never thought that I would do it in Vietnamese oh. because I feel like, um, Okay, my parents will understand what I say, and I'm not ready for that at that time until I met I met him. You know, so we all were you know Nam and then We Nguyen and Tom. We were all kind of like performing in the English circuit. So that's when we kind of you know came together as a group with no name, and we started doing shows that we invited our friends to come <laughs> to watch begging it. Them. Yeah, begging oh, them please. every week, like 10 please. people, you know, and then, then we just started performing uh, mm. until we, we felt like, okay, now, now we are a group, so yeah. we need a name, we need a logo. I did the logo. Uh, <laughs> I, it, it's all like in-house, and uh, we, we just started uploading video on YouTube, and we didn't kind of expect anything mm -hmm. and then he went viral yeah, uh, yeah like did. like hello class hello hello <laughs> hello teacher good morning my name uh, my name is is Nam. everywhere in like a week and then we suddenly get from begging people to coming to come to our show yeah. we actually got like 40, 50, 60 people, and it, we didn't even sell tickets. Yeah, we didn't. You know? Because it was at Tom's Cafe. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so, right. so it was like, everyone came, and then like, there's like, so many people, and now we have to reject people. Yeah. And I'm like, no, Please we can't do this. Now we need to have a process. Uh -huh. and, and that's when we started actually like doing show, yeah. like getting in show business uh -huh. like okay. that. Um, so that was a we there was no plan. Mm -hmm. It was just, we wanted to do it. And then it got more serious time after time. <laughs> and then we just tried to catch up with that, that um, attention that people were giving us, which I'm very grateful for. Yeah. 
So there you have it, folks, the creation of Saigon. <laughs> and I, I find it very interesting how, in a very strange way, I think uh, Saigon Tao and IFO, like our mm -hmm. show right now, has quite a similar start. Oh. So it starts in English, right? Mm -hmm. We are rooted in our ability and our, our usage of the English language. Mm. But then it started to grow because we wanted to share yeah. their, the content through that language with other people. Mm, mm, but the mm. focus was always about the content. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it was always made for you know the Vietnamese crowd. So yeah. we wanted it to connect to the Vietnamese root also. Mm -hmm. So I know An Uy Le was uh, one of the founders of Saigon Tho. Mm -hmm. And An Nam was one of the first viral you know, yeah. acts of Saigon yeah. Tho. Yeah. Uh, but I'm sure because stand-up <clears throat> comedy or comedy in general has always been a vicious field. Mm. Because you know there there's a lot of controversy that comes after every show. Mm -hmm. um, so I genuinely believe making the active choice to become a stand-up comedian and branding yourself as such mm -hmm. has not been an easy journey. So mm -hmm. why did you decide to join on An Uy's? I'm like I got no choice. <laughs> like you know I, I I used to be the guy who want to bring joys and some story to everybody. I I like telling story. He already and does that in his normal life. So. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of like me every day. So um, when I got, I saw the, the comedy, the stand-up comedy on, t on television, and I'm like, whoa. In Vietnam, I, I, I never seen it before, so I tried it in the, 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 English, scene, the English club. Uh, I decide, OK, so why? Why we don't try it on Vietnamese? Why we don't have? any group or any community, com community in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. So I decided with him and to another guy to, OK, let's go, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, everything come very natural. And surprisingly, we are here. Still here. Mm. Still here. <laughs> Still here. <laughs> Still here. Still <laughs> hugging on. Oh, God. In the beginning, we were telling jokes. You know? We were just, um, you know, whatever happened the other day that was funny mm -hmm. is going to be in our performance. But when we got viral, you know, when we, we, we understood that we were reaching out to younger people, mm -hmm. we realized, what are we saying? You know, <laughs> what, what are we representing? Mm -hmm. And that kind of became, you know, a necessary pressure for all of us to like reassess, okay, what is the message? What am I trying to say? What am I trying to convey to all these young people watching? I, I need to be saying the right things. Yeah. I need to be funny for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. So a lot of controversy comes from the fact that I tackle you know, some issues, mm -hmm. uh, social issues mm -hmm. that I think needs to be talked about. And that generates a lot of, you know, you know yeah, comments. Yeah, generates a lot of backdraft. And, and a backdraft. Yep. But, but I think it's necessary because the role of comedy at the end of the day is to, to bring up these things, you know. Yeah. So we start to question it, we start to laugh, and then we start to think, and then we start to realize, wait, why haven't I assessed this problem before? You know, why, why aren't we talking about, you know, um, the, the, the double standards? Mm -hmm. Why are we talking about the, the prejudice that we have uh, with being a person, for example? So mm -hmm. I think those controversies are necessary, even though sometimes it, it does get to you as a yeah. comedian. But, but I, I'm trying to make amends with myself. <laughs> like, like, that's my job now, you know, uh -huh. and I read all the comments. Let's step away from the pressures a bit. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you guys, what has been the most rewarding experience mm -hmm. as a stand-up comedian that you have experienced? Um, okay, for me, the most rewarding thing is to receive, uh, not, I'm, I'm not talking about the likes, the views, the reach or whatever, I mean, you do care about that, mm -hmm. but um, I, I love it when I receive a letter Aww. or like a really, you know, a wall of text, <laughs> you know, yeah. a lot of messages about something that I have said or about one of my performances, mm -hmm. that a person finds such a connection to it. Mm -hmm. uh, because you know, when I was performing in English, uh, I'm very used to going to a country you know, that I don't know alone, uh -huh. performing alone, winning a competition alone, and then going home alone with nobody like, really caring about what I do. Uh, I think it's just part of the craft. But I never thought that I needed 
you know, that mm -hmm. energy of people appreciating what I do. Mm -hmm. And when I start doing it in Vietnamese for all of us, yeah. we started to mm -hmm. connect with so many people, mm -hmm. like on a, such a deeper level. Mm -hmm. uh, and whenever I, I talk about something and people send me messages saying, wow, like that really connected to me, that represented, that's something that's on my mind for such a long time, but thank you for saying it. Yeah like I feel better like that like a hundred bad comments like can be like erased by just one of that like mail and and that's the most rewarding thing that I feel like I'm on the right path like I'm doing something right mm -hmm. and and I think that's worth yeah that's the word I, I believe stand-up comedy since you're using words you're manipulating words mm. and you're manipulating a lot of visual aspects also yeah. mm. it must be not only difficult but also very rewarding once but i also see that you guys are doing it for the connections like the very human side of yeah. arts too you are using your voice to make fun of but also draw attention to yeah, yeah. things that you uh, believe are important and i think that is so valuable i i hope you guys are you know able to continue to do, yeah. spread the magic <laughs> that you are doing right now and uh, <laughs> That's it, you guys. That is Saigon Tho of the present. And that is a very deep, but also <laughs> very fun uh, look at their career as of present. But mm. upcoming is a deep dive into Phương Nam and Uyle as themselves, their person. And mm. I'm so thrilled to get to know about your philosophy <laughs> in building your own character. But right up next is On The Go. Okay. Next on IFO Nightly Show. We are going to visit a Foreign Trade University and Diplomatic Academy of Vietnam. It's such a beautiful day to kick off season eight on the go journey. And I'm right here at the intersections of Chu Lang Street and Nguyen Thi Thanh Street. This is the birthplace of many major universities. Right over there is the Academy of National Administrations. And over there is the uh, Hanoi Law University. And I'm not going to be alone on this journey. I have a, com a company my beautiful co-host Chang Yong. <laughs> Hi audience, it's actually my first time hosting this segment, but it's okay because I have a beautiful and talented companion with me. So we're on Chua Lang Street, right? right? So which universities are we visiting today? We are going to visit a Foreign Trade University and Diplomatic Academy of Vietnam. So why don't we go right now? Let's start our journey. Yeah, let's go. Vietnam, right? Right. I see a familiar face right over oh, there. Uh, hi. <laughs> I'm actually very curious about the majors, outstanding majors at oh. DAV. What do uh, students usually take course in? What, what well, majors? DAV is, well, notoriously famous for uh, several majors. For, we have the international relations, so basically politics. And then we also have finance, economics, and then, of course, English. Uh, last year, one of the most uh, requested, or the most famous, uh, famous major is actually uh, communication. So, so currently we have like six majors and they are very sought out of. I did uh, a course in uh, English language 
So basically, uh, it focuses on focuses on translations and interpretations. I have never like really um, going. Yeah, going to the, <laughs> the university. So although we are kind of neighbors in quotation marks. <laughs> Uh, it's for the, all the faculties, uh, right, uh, faculties and departments, and the offices are right over there. Uh, we have Mr. Phan Bing Ming. Oh. He is the Deputy uh, Prime Minister of Vietnam. And then we have Mr. Bu Teng Sir. Mm. He is Minister of um, Foreign Affairs. Right. And we also have a lot of famous celebrities, for example, like Van Hugo, Van Hugo, a Greenling singer. And of course, we have our muse, our favorite muse, Tang Vi. For our schools, uh, we have to dress nicely and of course, uh, politely as well. And yeah. sometimes we have to dress appropriately because uh, inside of this building, we have several conference rooms. So we hope and the school hosts a lot of meetings with a lot of foreign uh, officials. So we have to look apart. Uh, suits, tie, zipper, dress, and then of course a lot of uh, suits. Of course, a lot of suits. <laughs> yes. It's not like a fashion school. Well, I guess that is a um, that is a, like a snapshot of what our school is gonna be like. We should take a look at this beautiful girls' university, the uh, foreign, foreign trade, trade university. university. You have arrived at Foreign Trade University. This university known as a beauty furnace, yep. where a lot of um, beauty contests or Miss Beauty was created uh, out of this okay. university. And actually, my co-host here is also a, a, a beautiful girl from Fatu. I'm actually hiding my <laughs> kind of a happiness because... Oh, oh hi! Oh, hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Hi. I've been there. I used to be a nerd, like who studied hours, like spent hours on grammars and vocabularies, on maths, and yeah, all these very fast. So this is uh, kind of a uh, alumnus of the Foreign Trade University. It's really nice to see you here today, and I hope today you can be our tour guide to kind yeah. of show us some unique spots of yeah. Foreign Trade University. So as you can see, this is the building VJCC. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a like a building for international um, cooperation, like human resources and everything. And wow, a lot has changed since last time I was here. <laughs> wow. We have a new kind of uh, FIIS. Yeah, with yep. the new design and everything. Really nice. Building. I still remember all the time, like I have to wait for the elevator to get to the class. Mm. But you know the struggle when you're like five minutes late and they're <laughs> checking the attendance and everything. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm one of the current students at FTU, so I absolutely understand the feeling. Right, so <laughs> relatable, hey. Yeah, so I study finance in at university. Um, so I'm gonna find some job in the finance sector, like financial analysis, and also very interested in communication and media. Mm -hmm. So might dive a little bit into that. Yeah, I think that you also study at mm -hmm. FTU. Yep. So any plans? Uh, my major is international business economics, but as you see, I'm doing MCing right now. So. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of like go off the track, but it's okay because I think um, all the skills that I've had studied at this university is gonna help me a lot in my future career. That's uh, really is it the same true. place too? Like, yeah, yeah. 
not many people know, but I also did like nutrition and exercise at university, mm. which is like totally different from finance. But I mean, you can study as much as you want and just use the skills, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. Basically, accumulate as much skills as you can because yeah. who knows? You will use it in the future, right? That's true. That's really true. Ooh, wise let's, words. Let's sit and rest here. Do you know that this is the kind of place that we always kind of pray before the exam so that we have good grades? So this is some sort <laughs> of a, like so a ritual funny. place? <laughs> yeah, a really ritual uh, place, but it, it's kind of like a unique feature of yeah. a portrait university students. Right? Yeah. Can we let's sit, sit yeah. down? Let's sit down. Mm -hmm. So um, that was our talk mm -hmm. with um, a two. Uh, random people that we met on the street. So one was from um, uh, the diplomatic, the, diplomatic yeah. uh, the, di the diplomatic academy of Vietnam, and here is uh, an alumnus uh, from uh, FTU. So I think uh, we have to understand more about uh, current student life and then career choice. They are major. It's no better way to actually see one of uh, those. And we have uh, Chang Yong here, who is also a current student. And the next spot, we're going to meet other two current students. So stay tuned for that. And back to the studio with Thao Tam. Welcome back from On The Go. And uh, I hope you enjoyed your time with Chang Yong and Thu Yung at DIV. But now it's for uh, our talk, another <laughs> talk with Saigon Tao. I believe that you guys, since you are str uh, juggling a lot of uh, tasks from being a comedian to being uh, an influencer of sorts on social medias because you also have very strong social media presences and also developing your own personalities. This is a tra task of a multitasker. Mm. <laughs> is there a philosophy behind all of this multitasking that connects all of your work? So basically, I've always been an an easily bored person. Mm. <laughs> That's, there's no philosophy there. <laughs> so I basically started, um, I, I would call myself a generalist. Mm -hmm. So I, I like to learn a lot of things, mm. even though I don't really know how it will help me. Mm. Uh, so in the past, I've learned, uh, I don't know, I've learned uh, contemporary dance. Mm -hmm. uh, I've learned, uh, you know, I t I've taken vocal lessons. Mm -hmm. I have, um, yeah, I've, I've learned a little bit about acting. I don't want to, you know, do it in front of an actor, <laughs> an, an actress. And then, um, I, I, of course, I learned about stand-up comedy, about mm -hmm. improv comedy. And I'm, I'm actually learning about, like, old um, Vietnamese language, too. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a bunch of stuff that I don't really know in the past. When, when you're a student, you don't really know how it will help you, mm -hmm. you know, to be honest. But uh, as a generalist, um, I realized that having a lot of skills, mm -hmm actually, you know, there will, you will start to see the connection. Mm. Uh, so when I perform comedy now, I talk about rhythm a lot yeah. with them. And then I realized that sense of rhythm that I have comes from my background in music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah. I, I see that beat, <laughs> when it's a comedy beat or like a music beat. Uh, there's a lot of things that I learned from, you know, dance that I can apply to, you know, whatever we're doing, you know, body physically, yeah. you know, the body and language. I think the world is traveling towards that direction too. We're traveling yeah. to a generalist world. Yeah. Like specialization is, you know, only reserved for very particular mm, jobs mm, 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 and mm. very particular areas. Yeah, yeah. But I, I also think um, a passion for learning mm. is in, inevitably always productive. Yeah. Th this is exactly what I'm experiencing with a liberal arts education. Yeah. So whenever somebody asks me, well, so what's your major? I'm just going to be, <laughs> yes, <laughs> I major. Yes. <laughs> I am learning. <laughs> that I'm sure. But yeah. I, I'm, I love it to, when I see people who are you know, thriving mm -hmm. on a generalist philosophy. Yeah. Because like, it, it used to be a very scary thing, you know, like yeah. being able to do a lot of things but not being specialized in one thing. Mm. Um, I, I wonder if that's true for An Fu Nam also. So are you also a generalist or are you focused on any field currently? Um, I think I am on the time of learning. Mm -hmm. So the, the first and the most important thing I, I I think I'm learning right now is asking the right question ah. and asking the right person. I have to learn from the beginning mm -hmm. to be 
to become a stand-up comedian, mm. to become a talent in a group, like to professionally become, yeah, working, professional yeah. working, <laughs> to become uh, a normal person <laughs> <laughs> in real life. Uh, yeah, a lot of things to yep. do. Yeah, you know. Uh -huh. So um, I'm very happy to have a group as a family mm. to always be here and support me. Because so. we always teach each other. Yeah. You know? mm. Because With the thing, the thing is like like we're very different. Uh -huh. Like. I'm I can the, see that. Like opposite. I, I'm the hardworking one because I don't, you know, in the beginning, I'm like, oh, I don't have enough talent, so I have to work really hard and have uh -huh. to study this, study that. And then when I saw him, That's me. on his first show, he was killing it. Mm -hmm. And I was jealous because <laughs> I learned for four years and this kid just came out of nowhere, uh -huh. killing a show, mm -hmm. being so good. And I was so jealous. And then I realized he doesn't really know why he's good. Yeah, mm. I you know. know so, so basically, what, what he's doing. doing is like relearning. Okay, yeah. I'm doing all these things, but what e what are those things? Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. Meanwhile, for me, like I learned from like you know one and two and three. So, so we see here a gifted kid yeah. and like the hardworking. Yeah, kid. the hardworking kid. But yeah. like at the end of the day, I genuinely believe uh, each need the others. Come component yeah, to yeah, be yeah. able to make it in the industry too. Yeah. So that's why we, we kind of teach each other because sometimes mm. I see him do that thing and I was like, wait, you can do that. Okay, mm. that's a good thing. And then, I, <laughs> and then I tell him and he's like, I did what? <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I did what? <laughs> what we usually say in the workshops that we try to help, you know, young kids, you know, try stand-up comedy try. is mm. to, to say what you think is funny. Mm. Don't say what you think is people. funny to others, yeah. Yeah. you know, and that's the common mistake because you usually try to kind of make a joke yeah. to pander to other people. Yeah. It's just like yeah. this is gonna funny be funny to that person, yeah. and I agree. You know, the, the thing, the reason why you can't teach humor is that it's so different to one another. Like yeah. what you find funny and what yeah. I find funny different. is different. You know, there are some common grounds because we are human. Yeah, yeah. that is a very very deep dive, I mm -hmm. think, into the philosophy of creating or uh, not really creating, but synthesizing mm. the humor that Saigon Do delivers. Mm. And uh, I think if we take a step back, I think Saigon Do itself is an entrepreneurial um, adventure because you are putting into the market a new mm. product that is yeah. stand-up comedy. Well, that concludes our section now. We'll take a small break and we'll go right back to Jung and Jang Yung right now at DAV. We're gonna be hearing from our aspiring youth at DAV and FTU. So, I present to you, Jang Yong and Tu Yu. Next on IFO Nightly Show. Hi, my name is Nyu and currently I'm a third year student at Foreign Trade University. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Sonang. I'm a senior at Diplomatic Academy of Vietnam. I think there's no better way to understand about student life as well as um, major in school rather than actually meeting the current students from the top-notch university in Vietnam. So right now I'm at the Ho Quan He and next to me is two talented students from Foreign University and Diplomatic Academy of Vietnam. So you guys, can you introduce yourself? Uh, okay, so hi, my name is Ho Nhu and currently I'm a third year student at Foreign Trade University and my major is International Business Economics. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Sonang. I'm a senior at Diplomatic Academy of Vietnam and my major is International Relations. So this is a question that probably we're going to ask like every student in the IELTS on the go segment. Why did you choose your major and not any others? Uh, Sunang first, please. Oh, okay, so I have always been wanting to be a diplomat, and mm -hmm. I think DAV is the best school for that. And also, my sister have already studied here, and she gave me great reviews about DAV, so that's why I choose this major. So uh, in terms of choosing my majors, actually, like um, business economics, which is Kinh Tế Đối Ngoại, is one of the most famous majors in the FTU. So I just, okay, I will go, I will go for FTU, then yeah, 
think they're doing well, and that's it. All right, so following up uh, with uh, your major that you were talking about, so are you guys planning to do what you are going to do in the future that related to your major or are going to uh, go into a different field? So like my answer is no. In the future, I would like to work as an English teacher, but uh, I never feel regret to choose FTU because like even though I don't really like my major but I have a really good network here so it's still a good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, maybe I'm the opposite because I still want to be a diplomat. I think all my experience here at DAV gave me a lot of uh, encouragement and motivation to become a diplomat even more when I when uh, compares to when I was younger. If you have to choose, uh, which one is like the most precious value that you kind of receive uh, from the time that you study at your, uh, at your university? Uh, maybe the activities. I think uh, although there's COVID-19, but uh, as I experienced my years at Diplomatic Academy of Vietnam, I got the chance to join and participate in a lot of different events and activities like seminars or programs. And those programs really gave me a lot of skills, a lot of knowledge, and also the, um, the network that you have already mentioned. All those people really influenced me in a positive way. Yes. Uh, so like for me, people is the most important value I receive at FTU because you know like I'm a third year student but actually I have uh, two years in the COVID-19 situation so I'm mainly active online but like uh, when I go online I see all my friends from FTU, they are really good at what they are doing currently. So like for example, I have friends who is the president of one club or like another friends, um, they participate in um, extracurricular activities. And for me, when I go online, I try to share experience for teaching for me personally. So like it's really have like the network, the people, it's really great. Okay, so you two have mentioned a lot about extracurricular activities, but I think it's not really extra because you guys have um, received a lot of benefits from those activities. So to be precise, I think it is school activities, right? Um, and in terms of school activities, in the whole season of IELTS Face Off Season 8, we will have a lot of experts uh, sharing about school activities and what kind of benefits the students can kind of uh, you know receive from those activities and I believe that these two outstanding students here have uh, learned a lot about communication skills about presentation skills and that's why in the in today's episode we're gonna test their debating skill we're gonna have a live debating session here uh, in terms of um, probably a topic that you guys will probably a little bit familiar but you guys may not have uh, you know thought about this so much so that's why we're going to give it back to Thảo Tâm to see what the topic of the debate is. Như and Sơn Anh, this is the motion for you. Recently, the word depression has been widely used by a majority of young people. This trend would help raise people's awareness about mental health care. Are you for or against this motion? I actually love what they are doing right now. It's kind of ironically because this is just so romantic for a debate. Uh, but yeah, I will leave the stage for you. So please start your debate. Okay, so uh, I am the four for this topic. So I have two main points. My first main point is that uh, if you want to raise awareness, you should mention it frequently. And why is that? Because uh, nowadays, most of, a lot of people are using social media and who posts on social media the most? Of course, it is the young people. And when the young people mention something on the social media, a lot of people will see it. When you see it, you hear it, you interact with it, you will have more awareness about that problem. Uh, for example, the uh, COVID-19 situation. Uh, if the government or anyone wants everybody to raise their awareness on the uh, COVID-19 situation, you have to use the media. You have to put it on headlines, on news. You have to put it on social media. You have to put it on the radio to warn people about the uh, effect of COVID-19 so that the people will uh, vaccinate the people will wear a mask. Uh, the second main point I would like to mention is that the uh, young people are the most important part 
of the society. So when the young people need help, calls for help, a lot of people will care about them. First of all, maybe uh, from a small scale is their parents, their family, uh, and moreover, the schools, the NGO companies and society will care about the future leaders, the futures, uh, the futures of their country, of the society. So when the young people mention something, is that uh, especially about depression, a lot of people will have to think about the solution to cure this problem for those young people. And that is my two main points. I'm strongly against the idea of widely using the word depression. So first of all, um, parents might downplay the seriousness of the disorder itself. You know, in our developing country, um, people have little to nothing knowledge regarding the mental health care. Therefore, when um, you spread the misleading information, people might have the uh, wrong responses when their children actually have the disorder. Secondly, I want to mention the fact that there's a lot of people post negative things online. You know, um, they might post their um, suicidal images or their suicidal thoughts they used to have in the past and which lead to a number of young children try to harm themselves. And there, there have been reported cases of youngsters try, trying to harm themselves. So my very last point, so my last point is people who actually have the disorder might seek the advice from online group, you know, like a depression group on social network, instead of going to professional psychologists, which will have um, negative impacts on their disorder and they might find it difficult to overcome depression. What a debate, right? So that is their point of view on the topic of depression. Well, I think depression is an universal issue and particularly during this COVID-19, during the lockdown, a lot of people are restricted in a one concrete space. So they are coping with anxiety and depression. Well, but life continues and every cloud have a civil lightning. And I think one of the best ways to cope with depression is to go and eat. So can you guys take us to a food tour around here? I heard that there are a lot of hidden spots, funny spots around Chulang Street. So please take us to eat. Yeah, sure. sure. <laughs> All right, guys, now stay tuned for the next bus because we're going to eat. back to our studio on IFO Nightly Show Student Edition and uh, with this episode we have Saigon Tao here but right now they're in a very different uh, uh, we're, we're transformed into. Uh -huh. Usually we would do like a cut where I say oh, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> Okay so um, I heard from the producers that uh, this transformation is very intentional. What, can you tell me why you, you so, so, went to so this? So I'm transforming back to my student self. So uh -huh. that's why this is my you know, outfit when uh -huh. I was a student because I was a student of you know, the University of Architecture, uh -huh. which is an art school. Mm -hmm. So you know that we will always get our hands dirty. Uh -huh. 
you know, with not the dirty stuff, with paint and stuff like that. <laughs> Think about it how you will. So <laughs> basically, like like these pants are very comfortable because we're always like like sitting on the ground mm -hmm. because like our drawings are like all over the place like this. Mm -hmm. And then this is also for you know whenever it's dirty. <laughs> yeah, I guess. And then, then I used to have like these pants with a lot of pockets mm -hmm. because we have a lot of like you know paint brushes and stuff like that. We can keep it there. Mm -hmm. And then we have. Um, notoriety of you know students who you know work overnight and ah. then didn't have time to shower yeah. and then go to the <laughs> class at like 10 a.m <laughs> presenting to the class while smelling really fishy <laughs> no, that, oh, that's not me not me not but you? you know i'm just saying sure? so um <laughs> particularly depend on the class but uh -huh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is my, my, you know, my student look, yeah. Uh -huh. Now they're usually dressed with a black color, mm -hmm. uh, or maybe full black, but uh, when I was a student, I usually uh, wearing white, because oh. this is uh, like a very common color for the student, mm -hmm. and back in the day, I don't have a fat belly, so <laughs> <laughs> I had to hide it. <laughs> You know, actually, like dressing in white for me is a good disguise because a lot of students dress in white. So it's really hard for like the teacher to notice you when they like. Yeah. Yeah. So do you often wear this to school? I don't. I don't think so. I don't usually dress up because I'm not going to school that much. Ah, okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit about, you know, your time in university? Because this is a student about, uh, this is a series about student life. Mm. And we would love to know why um, your education has turned you out as people, like, hey. the people that you are today. So, so if, if I talk about my background, people will be just confused. Because mm. like in high school, I was in, you know, an English major class. Mm -hmm. So everyone, I don't know, thought that I would go to like, you know, university of like, you know, doing something like diplomatic or teaching English and stuff like that. But I, I wanted to do something artistic. And by that, I mean, I don't want to take an exam in mathematics. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I kind of browse around and, and, you know, I thought of music. But then, like, I don't have a, you know, a, I, I'm, I, I, know, I have some vocal lessons, mm -hmm. but I don't really know more, you know, about like music, like music theory and stuff like at the time. And then I browsed about psychology, and then when I researched about psychology, it took eleven years to actually oh. be in practice. You know, yeah. back then I don't know about now. Mm -hmm. So like, all of the things came back, and there was graphic design. Mm -hmm. That's something that I was not too, you know, familiar with. But I thought, well, it's, it's artistic. Like, at least I want to do that. I taught myself how to draw like, in like a year. Not, not taught myself, but I went to you know, the classes. But then I've never done that. You know? I've, never, yeah. Like, yeah. I've never drawn, like, I've never you know, draw something in my free time. Mm -hmm. So when I actually got into school, it mm -hmm. was a surprise. Uh, and, and I got into this new lifestyle, you know, yeah. everyone around like was drawing something, was designing something. Yeah. And, and that was really cool because I, I, I wanted to get into that lifestyle of creating stuff. Mm. Even though I eventually became a designer, an art director, and then a <laughs> marketing person, and then a comedian, you know, yeah. but the, 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 the line is creation. You know, I yeah. always want to create. Sounds great. I, I love how you said like the bottom line was creation. Mm -hmm. And you set that as a bottom line, which is, you know, a very yeah, yep, yeah. a very big goal. But at the same time, I think you've achieved it fine. I kind of like a long wolf uh -huh. in the university. I'm not uh -huh. studying uh -huh. with my class. Uh -huh. I just alone come and get back home uh -huh. immediately after it's finished. I do a lot of part-time job, uh -huh. like uh, customer service, mm -hmm. uh, a seller, and especially uh, teaching English, mm -hmm. basic, <laughs> underline is basic English, okay, so no judging, okay, so okay. <laughs> yeah, can I, but, but I love it, I love yeah. the, the, the time in university because it's, it's helped me to enjoy everything I want to do, mm -hmm. and in like, in, in the last year, I found out, yeah, stand-up comedy, mm -hmm. so we are here. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very interesting because one person started with like, you know, like wanting to do something creative and mm. then another person kind of found yeah. creative yeah. work after experiencing a lot of other types of work. You, yeah. you mentioned you were in service mm. and also. Uh, how do you think your time in university 
formed who you are now? <laughs> so I think I think the thing that made me become like this mm -hmm. is because I had a time when I not really know what I'm doing. Mm. Yeah, who am I? Mm. And and like it's kind of like empty inside. It's it's just like a, a videotape. It's like replay, yeah, replay, repeat, repeat yeah. every day. Like it's exactly like a videotape. So I feel very like itchy inside. So I feel like I have to find something. Mm. And one day I saw a television about stand-up comedy mm. in with my dad when he watching like um, what is it the news, mm. and he said, "Hey, why you don't try this?" Why you just, oh, yeah. so oh. your dad? Yeah. Okay. Wow. That I see so you sweet. talk a lot, but it's not making <laughs> money. <laughs> so okay. why you don't try something? Even Business now. mindset. Yeah. 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 So something why you don't out. try something? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think you making money with this, but actually, it's it's look like you. Yeah. It's look like you. It feels like. Yeah. Too. So I like. Yeah. I, I got nothing to lose. So mm -hmm. let's do it. I, I think. I think the thing that 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 is the same but also different between me and him okay. is that he loves stand-up for the performance aspect and yeah. I love stand-up for the creative aspect. Mm. So I, I usually am you know, proud when I have created something. Mm -hmm. like, like that video or that performance became something that people can you know, touch and feel. And as a student, uh, I was not sure of that. I think all of us were not sure because we were just, you know, doing stuff that, that came to us. Mm -hmm. So I, I tried to fill my days with experiences mm -hmm. uh, and it got stressful for a while. Especially there was, there was this time where I, I, I went for a competition, which is Vietnam's Got Talent. Uh, in, in 2012. So oh, I was a yeah. student mm -hmm. and I was singing, you know, backup for an a cappella group. So I was like, boom, boom, boom. Not doing much, but we got to the finals, and everyone asked, like, "What were you doing?" <laughs> and because of that experience, it was amazing. But then, you know, I, I felt like I was not a contribution. And then I went because of that experience. I was off, you know, university for like three weeks. And then when I went back to university, everyone is like, "Who are you?" You know, because that was my first year. So, so I felt that disconnection for a while as a student, until you know, I, I joined the music club and then I perform with them, and then I start to get back into that, that motion, and I feel like I was a part of a club, and then I feel like a part of you know, student life again. Mm -hmm. Only then do I start to enjoy it a little bit more, even though I do spend time, like Nam, I was spending time you know, doing you know, part-time jobs, yeah. I was spending time with like, extracurricular activities, mm -hmm. but yeah, that, that, that taught me something, because I... I I didn't feel like I was creating any value on my own. I was always yeah. some kind of group, some kind of club, and I like, was like someone in the you background know. waving, yeah. Uh, and, and I only found my value when I started doing stand-up, when mm -hmm. I started you know, doing things on my own, getting some credibility on my own. Mm -hmm. So that's a process. <laughs> It's really long. long. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a long process of you know, finding oneself and also yeah. like finding authenticity in, mm. yeah. in also like a group. I also want to hear about the experience of a lone wolf <laughs> in university. Why? I don't feel that's, that school is for me. Yeah, mm. not in your yeah. element. Yeah, not, yes. not in the same energy, the mm. same like what, what I want to do. Mm. So I, 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 I usually tell my, my friends like, you want to try some part-time job with me? It's, it's kind of very cool experience. They're like, no. <laughs> yeah, you should yeah. study. So I'm like, okay, so let me go. <laughs> let me go. go. Yeah. yeah. But actually, I'm a long wolf in the university because I got a lot of friends outside. Uh -huh. So yeah, I, I, I don't like I don't feel bad because of it. Yeah. I don't feel bad yeah, yeah. about it. It's it's interesting because I, I genuinely believe in, you know, good day lo thanh do. Like just yeah. you know, continue to travel and a, yeah. a, a route would emerge. Yeah, yeah. And that is kind of like the tagline. That's a, a title of one of our experts' book. 
uh, in the season called Phoenix Hall. Oh. And um, we, we're going to get to see a lot more of Phoenix Hall yeah. throughout the season. Yeah. But I, I would like to, you know, highlight that message even from the first episode, yeah. you know, because it's, it's so important for young people to see that it's, it's okay to struggle a bit in university. It's okay to not find your people yet. And it's mm. okay that you're in an environment that you feel out of place. Because eventually, if you work hard and you continue to, you know, look out for opportunities, you will eventually end up in the correct places. Yeah. If it's not in the correct environment, then it's with the correct people. Yeah. And then it just blossoms into something very natural and very, you know, meaningful eventually. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you so much for sharing us, <laughs> uh, sharing with us your student selves. <laughs> and um, if there was one thing that you would want to say to our audience before you left IFO Nightly Show Season 8, <laughs> uh, what would that thing be? Ha, huh, okay. I think uh, for one thing, I would say to, you know, the, the younger viewers, mm -hmm. you know, because I hope this is a message for everyone who's <laughs> a little bit confused about what you yes. guys are doing right mm -hmm. now. I think you shouldn't worry because uh, I, I've realized that whatever I've done, you know, like, you might think of it as a waste of time when you don't really use it, but it will click into place mm -hmm. in your yeah. life one way or another. Mm -hmm. So as a young person, I hope that, that you guys have you know, the courage to just try. Uh, I, 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 I heard some person say, when you want to find yourself, mm -hmm. you start with the question, who I am not. Mm. Yeah, so I, I think everybody and everyone is special. I think you should um, experience and try something to find the thing that you really, really belong to. Next on IFO Nightly Show. I just thought of a game, and I think this game would connect us or divide us. <laughs> After a very heartfelt talk, I feel like I should do something that brings back the heat. You okay. know, I want to create tension in this room. And uh, like I said at the beginning of our talk, um, I believe IFO Nightly Show mm -hmm. and Saigon Tho has a similar beginning because we originated out of our love for language mm, and we like yeah. to manipulate language to create content, right? Mm. So I just thought of a game. And I think this game would connect us or divide us. <laughs> because, oh, yes. um, okay. So the game is going to be uh, connecting the words. But okay. instead of, uh, when you usually play this in Vietnamese, right? Yeah. Because we're a, a mo like, monosyllabic or, uh, language. Monosyllabic yeah. language. Yeah. So we usually take like the last word and then connect it with the next word. Mm -hmm. But we're going to play this game in English now. We're going to use the last syllable of each word and connect it to the oh, next word. Oh, okay. Thanks, guys. That's my time. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go home. Uh, okay. Are you guys ready? Yeah. My first, uh, we're going to go this way. Okay? okay. Okay. I'm going to start with the word student. Dental. Tone. 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not, that's not. Not more multi-syllabic. Yeah, Syllabic. Two. You have to have at least. I guess it's taller. Talent. Yeah, talented. Oh, talent. Okay. Tedious. Oh, Tilly. Tedious. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> There's no word with Dias. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Yeah. no. No. Oh my God. No. Okay. And now Ula is out. What are you going to do as a punishment? I have no idea. <laughs> okay. How about two squats? Oh. Squat. Squat. Okay. Uh, can you? Okay, out. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. How many are we doing? Like, uh, the Vietnamese, two Vietnamese squats. Okay, is, is that like this? Yeah, yeah, I haven't yeah. done PE okay. for a while, yeah. like, like One. that. Yeah. Two. two. Okay, okay. back yeah. to the game. Yeah. It's good that I have worn these pants. Can, <laughs> okay. Okay. Can, can I do it already? Uh, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> Just okay. Uh, okay. Okay, Not so. Uh, uh, Round two. Okay. We're gonna do uh, a total of four rounds. Should I kill him now? Like, uh, broken? <laughs> can, 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 
Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> does that count? Okay, is that okay? Are we doing names? Okay. No, like let's let's do anything. Okay, okay so Mar, oh. so Mar, okay, yes, yeah. so Mar, Marshall, Mar, Marshall. Oh, Marshall. <laughs> uh, why am I? Uh, <laughs> What? Okay, I'm just Fire. gonna. Can I just like do ten now? Like I, no, I just, just two. Just no. two. Second round. Okay. Um. Oh, uh, okay. We're on to our third round. You get to start again, but we'll go this way. Okay. Okay. Um. Bad. Better. Me. That's me. Terrible. Okay. okay. <laughs> There's a word for this. Bleh. <laughs> Bleh. Like. Okay. Bleh. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Finally, yeah, one. Two. Okay, she should and have said like, yeah. so like we? bleach or bleachers. Yeah, or, uh, yeah. oh yeah. my god, that's my guy greeting. <laughs> okay, uh, okay. Yeah. last round. Okay. I am going to start. Okay. Viva. Viva. Believable. Okay. okay, oh no. Okay, wait, we just said that. Yeah, Ble bleach. bleach. That's not oh no, problem. bleacher. Bleach. Okay. Uh, no. Okay. Error. Oh yeah. Error. It's E R R O R. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh. Yes. Yes. Like yes. right, if no. I if I said like Rorschach's test, he said like Oracle. That, no. Error. Oh yeah, Oracle. Or okay. Celeste, okay. so, I deserve it. That's the game. So I believe it's uh, four for me, zero zero. Yeah. Okay. That's why we're doing Vietnamese stand up comedy. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the game. Thank you for joining me. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much, Saigon Tao, for joining us for this very first episode of <laughs> IFO Nightly Show, uh, Viva La Student Life Season 8. And this has been uh, such an enjoyable <laughs> time for me to see you guys squat. And now <laughs> <laughs> I love this. I love this. And uh, I really do love what you do. I've been such a big fan of Saigon Tao, and I believe. I'll continue to be a fan, uh, and I'll continue to see you guys prosper and flourish <laughs> all of your talents. And I hope that we get to meet each other uh, once again after the season, and for many more seasons to come, hopefully. And yes. I hope to see you guys on even bigger stage, yeah. accomplishing even bigger things. Yeah. So uh, that's it. That's it for episode one. Back to Kanvi. Well, I have to say that I love this episode. Um, it is so well thought out. It not only brings us, it not only brings us a lot of positivity, a lot of laughter. Um, the sense of humor of Saigon Thu is incredible. But I also love how you know you share about your inspiring stories, and it's just. Um, makes us want to reach for the better things in life and I really appreciate that. Um, thank you so much for being here and I really appreciate how Tao Tham handles the conversation so well, so smoothly. I'm really proud of you. Um, yes, and I think it's, it's, it is such a great beginning because you're the first guest and we're opening the season. So I do believe that this is a lucky start um, for the whole season and I, we, do, we all hope that the season will be full of laughter and positivity and you know, positive energy. So thank you so much for that. Promising you that we have the best, best, <laughs> best influences brought to you. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> what? Cái gì mới rớt vậy? Cái 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 bảng kia, cái bảng kia, cái bảng kia. À, ok. Dạ yeah. yeah, nó có thay One last time. <laughs>